Well, good evening, Coasters. A, uh, a great day out there today, and uh, we've just completed another week of, of lockdown. So I thought I'd do a bit of a roundup tonight. Lots of different things, things that have been uh, mentioned to me, worth discussing. Um, there were some concerns uh, today about the unemployment rises being recorded around the country. Um, from the 20th of March to the 20th of April, here's some of the figures. Central Otago, up 67%. Kaikoura, up 62%. Queenstown, up 267%. Selwyn District, up 48%. Now, there were many, many more of the areas that were in between the 20 and 30% increase, which looked like about an average. Now, on the coast, Buller was 7%. Grey and Westland combined was 17%. So it's now clear that the start of the increases predicted uh, will now accelerate as the wage subsidies drop off over the next four weeks. So we've just got to watch this space. Now something that uh, you know I've discussed this week with several people is the concern I have about neighbours dobbing in neighbours and friends in the name of COVID-19. You know, life's a long, straight road. And I urge you to consider if dobbing in is something that we want to do as New Zealanders. I mean, have a look for another way. I read on stuff that the uh, Ministry of Health have over 50 PR people to inform you about COVID-19 and why you should be in lockdown from their perspective. You know that uh, PR is all about key messages. So finding the PR spin is pretty easy, really. It's about as easy as identifying a troll on your Facebook page, uh, but not quite as easy to get rid of. You can find examples of PR at work in lots of places. Have a look at stuff every day. And have a look at the section on climate change. For the last 18 months, every day, there are five articles about climate change. Not six, not four, but five. And um, we call that PR. Now let's have a look at some of the PR in relation to COVID-19. We went early and hard. How many times have you heard that? I suggest that we all wait till the dust has settled and then get a decent analysis of the countries around the world of who did go hard, who did go early, and which country got the best results overall, uh, especially in relation to their economy, because that's pretty important. Another key message is um, be caring and kind uh, to each other. That's a, that's a good message. And you've heard it at the end of every speech. Um, made by most of the presenters. It's a key message in this COVID uh, campaign. Now, 24 people applied for an exemption to the lockdown to see mostly dying loved ones. All were declined by the Ministry of Health. But around New Zealand, many more had a relative or a friend, including myself, where their father or mother was dying and they were denied access even for a few minutes to say their final goodbyes. Were you one of these people? Send me a message. Now that's not being kind or caring. It's certainly not the New Zealand way. Then there are the women that have had surgical procedures or the birth of a baby without support. At one DHB, being told to shower in an outbuilding. Now that really got me going. Couldn't believe it. And I move further on to Mother's Day. It's this Sunday. We're coasters, lucky enough to still have a mother, are not allowed to join her for a special lunch or evening meal. Now if she lived in Western Australia, South Australia, Northern Territory, Queensland or New South Wales, 
you can take the kids and the family, join mum for a special Mother's Day meal. Special day for all of us. All this knowing that level two is happening next week, we're not allowed to do it. But that doesn't feel like it's kind or caring, does it? The PR campaign started when the government used a piece of 1950s Health Act legislation to impose the lockdown on an entire country. I see in the Herald today the legality of the lockdown is being challenged. Don't know, but an adverse result could have some interesting consequences, in my opinion. My view is it's more about democracy. This country must never allow the rule of government to be seized by a limited few based on a dodgy bit of old legislation dragged out of the cupboard. I move on now to a further matter that's been obvious and, and feels unfair to me. Health workers around the country have been daily congratulated on handling the 1,486 COVID-19 cases and the 21 deaths. And I have no doubt that they've done a great job. The missing heroes during the lockdown are St John, who have handled many hundreds the times of the numbers of the uh, 1486 COVID cases, while the COVID-19 hysteria has been whipped up by the PR people, which has complicated at times their life-threatening missions. More important, the resulting economic contraction will have placed considerable stress on St John and its ability to fundraise from the community during lockdown. It's put a real squeeze on it. Now in the next couple of years, as we move into a severe recession, it's clear we are now overdue for government to 100% fund St John, who are our first responders. I joined a Zoom meeting today with some leaders who were worried about the failure to support privately owned GP practices. Got one here, we've got one here in Ogatiga. They talked about the inequity of the DHB owned practices just continuing to spend as they can negatively fund their needs. Once again, it's front line. It's at the sharp edge. It's like St. John and private GP practices are hurting. And let me tell you, we can't do without them. Yeah, once again, that's not being kind and caring. It's missing the point. But today, the mayors and chairs sent a message or a letter to the Prime Minister with suggestions to help ease the coming unemployment on the coast and to increase the strength of our economy. Each of the suggestions is privately funded and none require government funding, but all require government consent. For me, it's going to be important to get the views of each of the leaders of all of the political parties so we know exactly where they stand. And if it's fluffy, let's call it fluffy. At least we will know where we stand when we vote in September. It's coming around pretty quick. So there we go, Coasters. Hey, a, a bit of a mixed bag there tonight. Um, have a great weekend. And I'm looking forward to a more normal lifestyle next week. Catch you later.